sometimes it all comes down to one shot, and that's what happened at the Mizuho Americas Open today. The inaugural playing of this event, Liberty National Golf Club, and a superstar making her professional debut. Rose Zhang, if you don't know it already, you will now. Incredible, 180 yards with a hybrid to six feet. She had a couple of putts and she took them to earn her first victory in her first start as a professional. We keep telling you, well, the messages keep com coming in and no less than Tiger Woods. He just posted on Twitter, incredible few weeks for Rose Zhang, defends her NCAA title and then wins in her professional debut. Go Card, yeah, he's a Stanford man as well. And we are delighted to say she joins us now live from the booth at the Mizuho Americas Open. Rose, thank you for taking the time. We see it's pitch dark behind you to come and speak to us. And congratulations <laughs> on what must just be a career-defining week in what is already a young but very stellar career. I know your expectations, you said, to oh. begin the week were just to make the cut. Now that you have achieved this, on the back of your illustrious amateur career, where does today rank for you right now? I actually can't believe it. This has been surreal, still is surreal. It hasn't sunk in yet. This is my professional debut, as everyone knows, and I was just thinking about scrambling to make the cut, um, let alone being in the final group today and just basically trying to execute a win. I'm just so thankful to be in this position. Um, it's just been a fairy tale ending right now. Well, you just said it. You, you At the beginning of the week, Carl was alluding to it, that you were just trying to make the cut. At what point did you begin to think that maybe this was going to be something special, maybe something magical? Was it the second round? Was it at some point yesterday? When did you think, I might be able to win this event? I can't even tell you because I have not thought that thought once this entire week. Um, I knew that I'm playing against the best in the world, and to be able to go out there and be in front of the leaderboard is not something that I expected. Um, I full-on thought about just executing every single shot. Liberty National played tough the entire week, and um, when you're out here, you really have to take it shot by shot, really stay in the moment, and... Um, these thoughts never really intruded my mind. Rose, you know, it was a grind out there today. No birdie on your card, even with the extra couple of holes, but you didn't need it. Let's speak about the 16th hole. It was a pivotal one for you this week. You drove the green there yesterday. There was a weight on the tee today. You chose wisely to lay up and, you know, pulled off a wonderful wedge stroke from there. But you did have a putt that could have given you a two-stroke lead with two to play. We know what happened, but were you at all rattled at that moment? And how did you remain so composed to close this out? Definitely. I don't really look at leaderboards. I'm not one to look at it, but, you know, there was the backdrop with the leaderboard showing and happened to see my name at the top with one stroke lead um, before I putt that putt. And it didn't really have any effect on me when I putt, but um, it's still, you know, it was just an unfortunate lip out, um, read it a little bit low. I thought it was a good putt throughout. And going to the next tee box, um, just thought, hey, just hit another good drive. Uh, you've been doing that the entire week, and um, you know that pars will get you there. So um, ultimately, that's just what I had to do, and that's all I thought about. Well, two holes later. Take us to two holes later. The disappointment of making the bogey. You hadn't made a bogey all... <laughs> well, I'm sorry, you had made a bogey at the fourth, but you, you, <laughs> you, you missed the putt at the last, right? So you can't win outright. How did you get over the disappointment, and what were, what were your thoughts as you were going into the playoff? Uh, to be honest, um, I wasn't as disappointed as I thought when the putt didn't drop. Um, I did read it a little bit low. I thought it was a perfect putt, and um, it just so happened to not drop. I knew that I had signed a, scorecard, signed a scorecard, and then I'm going to be able to play 18 again um, against Jennifer Cupcho and um, try to seal the deal there. But all I thought about was... You know, this is just another fun story to think about, to talk about. And um, I know that it's going to be a narrative uh, for the memories. And uh, I kind of took that thought and went with it. And then two holes later, in the second hole of the playoff, you've got a, almost the exact same putt. Was it the exact <laughs> same putt or did it break a little different? It was the exact same putt. It was deja vu just 
you know, I had the same exact line. Um, it was only three feet uh, farther away from my first putt, but I knew that a solid stroke was going to get that ball in the hole. And um, it was just a perfect putt. I went dead center and heard crowds, cheers. I got chills. Um, but I knew that Jennifer had another putt to make. And um, in my mind, I mentally prepared myself to go back to 18. So um, that's just what you have to do when you're in a playoff. And I've been in a couple before. So um, <laughs> it didn't surprise me or rattle me that Jennifer made the putt uh, for us to go back. You know, Rose, I couldn't help but think about the Augusta National Women's Amateur several times today. <laughs> Even the fact that you had to really grind it out on this final day and then go extra holes, recompose yourself to earn the titles for a playoff just like you did at Augusta National. Not only that, of course, you were up in the playoff against Jennifer Kupcher, who won the inaugural edition of the event. But you had Anna Davis alongside you today, who won last year. You, of course, the champion this year. Mm -hmm. So the AJGA component of this week ended up being a huge success. We enjoyed watching the juniors, but how did it help you, if at all, in terms of your comfort level and familiarity out there in your first professional event on the LPGA Tour? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, I think it was pivotal for me this week. I was very comfortable out there. Um, I knew familiar faces. I saw my favorite juniors. I played with them um, back in 2021 when I was uh, graduating high school. And um, these are people that I grew up with that I love. And um, seeing their familiar faces, we just caught up. And even in the weather delays that we had um, on day two, I was just sitting in the dining area with five five or six juniors and we just started talking about life, uh, talking about college, how their high school lives are going, graduation. And it really just kept me calm throughout the week. Um, Anna was amazing today. Uh, I feel like we just had laughs the whole way. And it really made me feel comfortable, especially with me being in this position for the first time. As a professional, uh, Anna really did allow me to be comfortable out there. We have heard so much about your work ethic. You know, I've heard your fellow teammate, uh, Rachel Heck, <laughs> talk about it. I've heard your coach, Ann Walker. They've lauded your determination. Of course, that's a commonality of the greatest players of all time. But mostly the greatest players of all time are driven by a sense of history. You know, it was Annika and Tiger, and they were going back and back trying to one-up one another. Jack was chasing Tiger's records. Jack was chasing Bobby Jones' records. And I just wonder, <laughs> what drives you? Is it to have a great place in the history of the game, or is it just to be better than you were the day before? Why do you work so hard? Where does that determination come from? It's certainly the latter. Um, I work hard every day to surpass what I know that I can do. And um, I never really am one to chase records, never am one to say, hey, I want to make history. I want to make my name big. Um, the, that's not really something that I think about on the daily. It's more of I see such amazing people around me. I have people who inspire me and push me every single day. They're doing this better than me. I want to be able to try to do something that they can do as well. And um, that just allows me to push myself further, especially being at Stanford. That place has allowed me to really grow and thrive. Um, I've seen, I actually feel inferior to my friends. Um, and everything that they do is so incredible that I'm just like, well, I only play golf. And um, I really have to try to grind there to, you know, make sure that I make up for whatever that I'm lacking up in uh, the academic world. But um, yeah, that's just how they keep me humble, how they keep me driven. And um, I definitely have a lot of faith with everything that's happening. Well, speaking of the academic world, I know you're going to finals next week. You've got to move out of your room. You've got a busy oh, schedule ahead. And I presume, <laughs> just before we let you go, I presume you're going to accept LPGA Tour membership. Yes, I will. <laughs> um, this is just... Incredible. I can't even think about um, all the opportunities that are ahead of me. And I'm just super excited to start my journey. Um, this has definitely been beyond my expectations. And I'm just thankful to be along for the ride. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have 
a lot of events coming up, a lot of golf, and safe to say that I'll keep working hard. Yeah, you've given Kevin and your team a lot of work to plot your schedule ahead. I know Captain Stacey <laughs> Lewis has been keeping a close eye on today as well. And hey, let's look way down the line. You look and sound pretty good in the broadcast booth, so <laughs> don't stay too far away from Golf Channel. Rose, we really appreciate you. Congratulations uh, on making history today. Enjoy the celebrations.